All right, you guys, it is two o'clock. It is Monday. It is time for yoga. Today, we are doing a hamstring focused vinyasa class. So if you are in a tighter body, it's gonna be like a whole mess of props today. So if you have a strap or something that you could use to replace a strap, um, a towel works great, or if you happen to have, I don't know, like a loose belt or, you know, something that could, could work as a strap, definitely grab that. If you have blocks, um, blocks are really great. If you have two symmetrical kind of thick books, that is a good option for you to use as well if you don't have blocks at home. And then I've got a way over here. But today, you may also want a blanket or a second towel that you can fold up and help you out a little bit. All right? So that's enough of a preamble. Here we go with today's hamstring vinyasa flow. So we're going to start seated. And if you already know you are in a tighter body and you have kind of tighter hamstrings, Sitting on top of a blanket is going to be, or that towel, is going to be a great option for you. So you're going to come into this comfortable cross-legged position. Close your eyes. And as always, we take the first couple of moments to settle in and connect with the breath. So allow your body to start to get quiet. You might be aware of sounds around you. You might be aware of sounds coming from my live stream. I have some very active neighbors. You may be aware of sensation in your body, right? If you feel uncomfortable, you can always adjust until you can sit comfortably. And then you might notice that your thoughts kind of jump around So see if you can start to at least settle your thoughts onto your breath. Just observe it for a couple of moments. You don't have to change anything. And then take a nice big inhale through your nose, filling yourself up completely full. And exhale, open your mouth, let it go. And again, nice big inhale through your nose. Exhale, open your mouth, let it go. And one more time, biggest inhale of the day so far. Exhale, open your mouth, let it go. And then start to find that steady, even breath in and out through your nose. And then once you've found that steady, even breath, go ahead and blink your eyes open. Interlace your fingers. Reach the hands forward and lift the arms up and overhead so you get a little bit of lengthening and stretching through the side of your waist. Lean yourself all the way up and over towards the right and then release that right hand down to the ground. You can turn your head to face the right hand or you can turn it to face the left fingertips, whatever your neck is up for. Find that nice big space. And then inhale, come back up. Take your left hand around the front of your right knee and start to rotate your chest around. So it's like a, a little twist here. And then inhale, come back to center. Switch the crossing of the legs so that the other shin is in front. Interlace so the other thumb is on top. Lift the arms up and overhead on your inhale. Nice big reach here. And then lean yourself all the way up and over to the left. Bring your left hand down. Get that nice bit of stretch through your side waist. 
Your gaze can be down at your left hand or it can be up at your right fingertips. And then inhale, come back up. Take your right hand around the front of your left knee and give yourself a little twist. Right? So it's just a wee rotation in your spine. And then inhale, come back to center. If you've got that blanket, go ahead and move it out of your way. Come up to all fours, shoulders stacked right up over your wrist, hips stacked right up over your knees. And we'll take a couple rounds of cat-cow, inhaling, lengthening the chest forward, sending the gaze up. Exhaling, pressing and rounding through your spine. Inhale, lengthen chest forward. Exhale, press and round through your spine. And one more time, inhale, lengthen. And then exhale, press and round. Inhale, come to a flat back. Tuck your toes and lift your hips up and back behind you, coming into your first downward facing dog. So your down dog is your first kind of hamstring stretch of the day. So if you're in a tighter body, at the beginning, it may be a really good idea to bend your knees quite a bit because what can happen when the backs of your legs are really tight is that it makes it so that your pelvis can't move around as well, right? Things just all get a little bit tighter up in there. And so when your pelvis can't move, right, when you can't tip those sit bones up towards the ceiling because the hamstrings are tight, it can start to really pull on your low back. So that's a lot of uh, information. <laughs> when the result really is, or the, the idea really is, bend your knees if your hamstrings are tight when you're in a downward facing dog. And then inhale, glide forward into your plank pose, top of a push-up. Right? So your shoulders are stacked, you might walk your feet back a little bit. Now the other thing that can cause tight hamstrings, I'll just monologue here while you're in a plank pose, is that the muscles around your hips can maybe be a little bit weaker. So your hamstrings are having to do more work so one of the things you can do in yoga is start to strengthen the other muscles. So as you're here in this plank pose, can you activate through your feet, lift the kneecaps and hug your outer hips in. So you're strengthening through your outer hips, giving your hamstrings a little break here. Take one more inhale. And then exhale, press it back to that downward facing dog. Bend your knees, shift your hips back, send your gaze forward and exhale, step or walk your way all the way up to the top of the mat. Again, keeping the knees super bent if you want. Inhale, hands on shins or maybe fingertips alongside toe tips, lengthen the chest forward. Ardha Uttanasana, flat back. And then exhale, release over your legs. Lift up high on your tiptoes and inhale, sit the hips all the way down onto your heels. And then exhale, lift the hips and send the heels down towards the floor. So warming up through the backs of those legs. Inhale, sit. Exhale, lift and lower the heels. Inhale, lift onto the tiptoes, squat the hips down onto the heels. Exhale, lift the hips, send those heels towards the floor. One more time. Inhale, lift, sit the hips down. Exhale, send the heels down. And then again, you find yourself in that forward fold. Maybe there's even a micromillimeter more of space here. As you repeat that action of hands on the shins or hands on the floor, lengthen the chest, come to a flat back. Just notice if there's any difference, however subtle. Exhale, release over the legs. Press down through your feet. Inhale, sweep your arms up and overhead. And then exhale, draw hands to prayer at your heart. Close your eyes. Shifting until you feel all four corners rooting down into the ground. So you, those feet are solid. The spine is long. The shoulders are relaxed. Head and neck are free. And you reacquaint yourself with your breath as you stand in this steady Tadasana, this mountain pose. Take a nice big inhale through your nose. 
Exhale, open your mouth, let it go. And then blink your eyes open. We'll continue to warm the body up through flow. Inhale, reach the arms up nice and high. Exhale, dive and fold forward over the legs. Bend your straight knees, nice long spine. Inhale, lengthen your chest forward. Exhale, plant your hands, step it back to that plank pose, knees up or down, your choice, shift forward, bend the elbows straight back, lower yourself down to the mat. This first round will be a little baby cobra, walk the hands back, peel the chest up, give the spine a little extension on an inhale. Exhale, release. And then for this first round, just repeat that nice little baby cobra, give that spine a little extension. Exhale, release, plant your hands, lift to all fours, tuck your toes, and shift back into that downward facing dog, straightening the legs as much as it makes sense in your body. Five smooth breaths. And then bend your knees, shift your hips back, send your gaze forward, step your way to the top of the mat, or maybe you take a little hop forward. Inhale, lengthen the chest. Exhale, release. Press down through your feet, sweep your arms up and overhead. Exhale, draw hands to prayer at your heart. Two more, just like that. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, plant your hands. Step it back into your plank pose again. Knees up or down. Shift forward. Bend the elbows into that chaturanga. And maybe you retake a cobra. Or maybe you roll over the tops of the feet. Lift the chest. Exhale, press it back to your downward facing dog. Five smooth breaths here. And while you're here, can you start to notice if you can strengthen the outer hips to support you and your dog? If you can feel the palms rooting down towards the floor, the feet rooting towards the floor, the heels may or may not touch. That's not super important. But the more you activate your whole body, the more you are able to take the stress off of one particular area. Then bend your knees, shift your hips back, send your gaze forward, exhale, step four, full of joy. Inhale, lengthen the chest. Exhale, release. Press down through your feet, sweep your arms up and overhead on an inhale. Exhale, draw hands to prayer at your heart. Last one. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, plant the hands. Step it back. Maybe you take a vinyasa. Maybe you just go uh, from plank to down dog. It's totally up to you every time. Right? We flow a lot. So you can always skip chaturangas. This time when you come back to your dog, inhale, sweep the right leg up and back behind you. Exhale, draw the knee all the way up into the nose, around through the upper spine. So you find that core stabilization like what we were working on last week. And then step that right foot in between the two hands, lower your back knee all the way down to the ground. So this may be one of those times that if you're in a tighter body, Having blocks to place your hands on are going to be really helpful here. Your right knee is stacked right up over the right ankle. Right? You're lengthening the spine forward, hugging that right hip back and in, and then walk your hands up the top of your right thigh bone. And if it makes sense, inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. If that's a little bit too much, right? you just keep the hands on the knee. And if this back knee needs a little bit of support, you can take that blanket or towel and slide it right underneath your kneecap. Take one more breath here so you're nice and long in the spine. And then keep that length. Just bring your hands down to the blocks or down to the floor. 
And then you're going to inhale, press your front leg to straight any amount, right? It may or may not come all the way to straight, but see if you can keep your spine long. And then exhale, shift back forward into a lunge, right? So it's not static. We're using movement to open up the backs of those legs. Inhale, press the front leg to straight any amount. Exhale, shift forward into the lunge. One more time. Inhale, press the front leg to straight. Exhale, shift forward into the lunge. And now we start to increase the mobility. Tuck that back toe, lift the back knee so you come into a high lunge. This is where those blocks are going to be really helpful. But if your hands are on the floor, right, if you don't have blocks, just bend that back knee a little bit. And then we find that little flow again. Inhale, press the front leg to straight, send the back heel towards the floor, keeping the spine long as much as possible. Exhale, shift into your lunge. Inhale, press to straight. Exhale, shift into a lunge. One more just like that. Inhale, press to straight. Exhale, shift into a lunge. And then this time, inhale, press to straight, and you're going to crawl your hands around towards the middle of your mat and turn your feet so they're parallel to each other. So the long side of your foot is parallel with the short side of your mat. Your hands are on the floor, or again, if you've got a block or a book and a tighter body, that might be a great place to put your hands. Lengthen the chest forward. And then exhale, release over the legs in this wide-legged straddle, Prasarita Padatanasana. So just let your head hang here. See if you can feel the backs of your legs lifting towards the ceiling if you're in a tighter body. Now, if you're in a super bendy body, see if you can contract your hamstrings just a little bit. Hug those outer hips in and lift your low belly and then release the crown of the head towards the floor just a wee bit more. Two more steady breaths here in this wide-legged straddle. Can you find Tadasana in your feet? So those feet are rooted through all four corners. And then inhale, length into a flat back. Turn the right toes towards the front of the room. Crawl your fingertips forward. Step it back into your plank pose. And then it's your call, vinyasa, or straight to a duck. And we get to do the whole thing on side two. Inhale, left leg floats up and back. Exhale, draw the left knee all the way up to the nose. Step the foot in between the two hands and lower that back knee all the way down to the ground. So resist the urge to let that left knee go way past the ankle. Stack the left knee up over the ankle. Maybe your hands come to blocks or maybe they come to the floor. Lift your chest. And then walk your hands up the top of your left thigh bone. And if it makes sense, Reach them up and overhead. So if reaching the arms up and overhead super stresses you out, just give yourself a little support, right? The idea is for this to be helpful, not stressful. Reconnect with your breath. Nice, long, steady inhale. Nice, long, steady exhale. And then bring your hands down to the floor or to your blocks. And again, helpful, not stressful. So whatever you need to make this enjoyable, inhale, press that front leg to straight any amount. Exhale, shift yourself forward into a lunge. Some days it's just realizing nothing lasts forever, right? Inhale, press to straight. Exhale, shift forward. One more time, inhale, press to straight. Exhale, shift forward. Tuck your back toe, lift your back knee. Find yourself in that high lunge position. Can you keep your spine super long here? As you inhale, press the left leg to straight. Send the right heel down to the floor any amount. Exhale, shift forward into your lunge. Inhale, press the front leg to straight. Exhale, shift forward into a lunge. One more time. Inhale, press to straight. Exhale, shift into that lunge. 
And then this time, inhale, press to straight. Turn your toes and turn your torso so that your feet come parallel with the short side of your mat. And then bring your hands to your hips and come all the way up to standing, right? So we're gonna repeat that cross arita shape, but with a different arm variation. So I'm facing the back so you can see what my arms are doing. Interlace your hands back behind you, lift the chest, and then imagine you were tipping your pelvis back and gliding yourself all the way forward, reaching the arms up and overhead any amount so your shoulders get a little release. And then I can say hello to the camera this way. You are probably facing away. Okay? If you want a little less on those shoulders, just let the hands rest on your tailbone. But see if you can shift yourself forward so those hips stack right up over the ankles. You might feel like you're about to do a somersault forward, so that's when you activate and lift through your low belly. Stabilize through those outer hips and then zipper those inner thighs up to the groin. Take one more big breath here. And then exhale, release the hands down to the ground. Turn your left toes forward towards the front of the room. Spin onto the ball of your back foot, and this time just step that right foot forward to meet your left. So you come back to the top of the mat. Inhale, hands on shins or hands on the floor, lengthen the chest forward, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, release over your legs. Bend your knees nice and low, Utkatasana, chair pose. And then come on up to standing, draw hands to prayer at your heart, close your eyes. And just let yourself reset in that Tadasana. Everything always comes back to mountain pose. Take a nice big inhale through your nose. Exhale, open your mouth, let it go. Blink your eyes open. We'll just finish out this warm up with Surya Namaskara B. Inhale, sit the hips low. Exhale, fold forward over the legs. Press them to straight any amount. Inhale, lengthen the chest. Ardha Uttanasana, flat back. Exhale, plant the hands. Step it back. You can take it through a vinyasa or go straight from a plank to a downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward between the two hands, back heel spins, inhale, single breath rises you up, warrior one. Exhale, hands come down, step it back, take it through that vinyasa or go straight from your plank to your dog. Left foot steps forward, back heel spins, inhale, rise, warrior one. Exhale, hands come down. Step it back and take it through a vinyasa or go straight to your dog. Five steady breaths. Again, giving yourself an opportunity to reconnect with the foundation. Smooth breath. Solid rooted hands. Solid rooted feet. And then on your next inhale, bend your knees, shift your hips back, send your gaze forward, exhale, step or jump your way up. Inhale, lengthen the chest forward. Exhale, release. Bend your knees, Utkatasana chair. Come on up to standing, draw hands to prayer. One more, just like that. Inhale, sit left. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or float it back through your vinyasa or go straight to your dog. When you make it to that dog, right foot steps forward, back heel spins. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands come down. Step it back and take it through. 
Left foot steps forward, back heel spins, inhale, rise. Hands come down, step it back and through. And then this time, walk your hands all the way back to your feet. Bring your hands to your hips and lift yourself all the way up to standing. Okay. So like I said before, pelvic mobility can be like <laughs> hamstrung by your hamstrings, right? So if you have a really tight pelvis, that can mean you've got tight backs of your legs. If you've got a really like loose mobile pelvis, it means you need to stabilize the backs of your legs. So you're gonna inhale, lift the chest. And as you fold forward, instead of thinking about folding from your spine, I want you to think about lifting your pelvis off of your legs, tipping those sit bones all the way back, right? So you're rolling your inner thighs back. If that means bending your knees a little bit so that you can get that tip, do so. And then hinging from the hips, you release yourself all the way forward over your legs. We'll take a couple of breaths here in Padahastasana, if that's available to you. You bring the Hands underneath your feet, so the backs of your hands are on the floor, the palms are touching your, the bottoms of your feet. If that's like, no way, I'm just trying to get a sense of hinging from my hips, a good option is just to grab opposite elbows here, or even keep your hands on your hips, and see if you can tip those sit bones up, right? Tilt the pelvis just a little bit. Two or three more breaths here. And then release your hands from whatever position they found. Crawl yourself way back into that downward facing dog. Inhale, lift your right leg up and back behind you. Exhale, draw the knee all the way up to the nose. Step the foot in between the two hands. Spin the back heel down and circle the arms open coming into warrior two. So now we hold some poses for a little while. Let your gaze be steady over your right fingertips. Find that rooted Tadasana feeling in your front foot. And then against that downward root through the legs, your spine is lengthening towards the ceiling. And then just let yourself be here for three more breaths. Long, smooth, steady inhale. Long, smooth, steady exhale. Flip your front palm, reverse your warrior. So you remember that side stretch from the very beginning of class. And then press that front leg straight, hinge your right hip back, and come on down into tree konasana, the triangle pose. So again, it's a lot of length in your front leg. If you have a block, and you want to place a block underneath you, that's great. Maybe your hand rests lightly on your shins. What we want to avoid is a collapse in the side waist. So you might need a little bit more height, right, until the legs start to release just a little bit more. And then again, if you're in a super bendy body, it's the opposite that's true. It's this return to center, contracting through the backs of the legs, so you stabilize through that outer hip. One more breath here. And then nice and easy, left hand comes down to the ground, spin onto the ball of your back foot, take it through a vinyasa, or maybe go straight to your dog. Inhale, lift the left leg up and back behind you. Exhale, draw the left knee all the way up to the nose. Step that left foot in between the two hands. Spin the back heel down to the ground and circle the arms open coming into that warrior two. So it's a chance here to really build strength in the legs, in those outer hips, in the feet, so that you can start to support those bigger muscle groups so they don't have to work so hard all the time. 
Soften through your shoulders. And then let your gaze be steady over your left fingertips. Several breaths here. Maybe closing the eyes if you feel a little fidgety in your brain. Maybe just gazing far off into the distance. One last big inhale, inhale here. Exhale, release the breath. Flip your front palm, inhale, reverse your warrior. And then press that front leg to straight. Lift your torso back upright. Hinge that left hip back. So again, it's pelvic mobility. And then you bring the left hand down to wherever it lands. So it might be just below the knee. It might be if you've got a block on its highest setting or a book, just do your best. Think about lengthening both sides of the waist evenly long. And then find a steady gazing point and reconnect with your breath. Last couple of breaths here. And then exhale, right hand comes down to the ground. Spin onto the ball of your back foot. Step it through a vinyasa or go straight to your dog. Bend your knees, shift your hips back, send your gaze forward. Exhale, step or jump your way up to the top of the mat. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. Bend your knees nice and low into that Utkatasana chair pose. So those outer hips hug in, the inner thighs roll down, those hamstrings start to contract. Come on up to standing, draw hands to prayer at your heart, close your eyes. And you find that nice even Tadasana. And then when you feel stable, you're going to blink your eyes open. So now's the moment if you have a strap, you're going to go ahead and grab that strap or that towel. If you don't, I will show you modifications that you can use for what we're about to do next. But we're moving into what's called Padangustasana. So it's like a hand to foot pose. So you're going to take your strap. You're going to stand on your right foot and you're going to loop the strap or the towel underneath the ball mount of your left foot and pick that knee up. So, keeping that standing hip really solid, keeping that sense of Tadasana in that standing foot, you're gonna to begin to straighten that left leg any amount. What tends to happen here is the foundation collapses or the torso collapses and everything is sort of like bleh. So you're gonna use the standing leg is your barometer. So that means that with your left foot extended here, lifted like four inches up off the ground, but you're getting a lot of feedback through the back of that leg, but you're able to stand up straight and stand solidly on your right foot. That's your action, right? Breathe and connect there. If you're in a super bendy body, right, you might find it's easy to bend the knee and extend the leg, and that's, that's a fine option too, but Allow stability to be your barometer of success as opposed to like how high you can get your leg. If you don't have a strap, you can bend your knee and hold your hand around either the front of the knee or interlace the hands underneath and start to extend the leg as much as is possible for you. So for those of you guys who have been standing here in Padangustasana for like 10 minutes while I monologue, you're welcome. We'll <laughs> do the same on side two. Take one more breath here and then bring your right hand to your right hip and bring both sides of the strap or the towel in your left hand. And you're just gonna rotate the toes towards the left and open that left leg out to the side wall. So we call this Padangustasana B. I'll turn so that you can see me. I've lifted, turned, and opened the foot out. It's a little hamstring 
feast. Take one more breath here in that B position. And then exhale, draw the foot back to center. Release the left foot down to the ground. You can drop that strap for a second. You can shake your feet up. Whew. And then inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. This is called Urdhva Hastasana. So it's two arms reaching up towards the ceiling, both feet rooting down, so you're getting super duper long. This time, you're gonna keep your left arm reaching up. You're gonna shift the weight into your left foot. You're gonna bend your right knee and clasp hold of the right foot. So it's like a quad stretch. Both sides, or both hip points are facing forward towards the front of the room. And then this might be plenty right here, or you begin to tip your chest forward and kick that right leg all the way back, coming into your dancer pose, right? So you're getting a little bit of balance, a lot of length here, a lot of stabilization. Last inhale here. And then exhale, come all the way upright. Draw your right knee up to your chest, but keep it lifted. Bring your hands to prayer at your heart. Tip your chest forward and reach that right leg all the way back to the back of the mat. Bend through your left knee. Step that right foot down and then lower the back knee down to the ground. Reach the arms up and overhead. So remember that Anjaneyasana from the very beginning of class? You're here again. We're just going to add some spicy mustard. Draw the hands to prayer at your heart. Twist your right elbow on the outside of your left knee. And lift your chest up and back. This might be plenty. If you want a little bit more, you tuck the back toe and lift the back knee, taking the twist. If you're really experienced and you're feeling very sassy and you want to spin that back heel down to the ground, it's that twisted variation of Parjava Kanasana. So you pick your version, knee on the ground, on the ball of the foot, or onto the outer edge of that back foot. Two more breaths here. And then exhale, unwind that twist. Take it through your vinyasa or go straight to your dog. Take a huge inhale through your nose. Exhale, open your mouth, let it go, and we have just one side left. Bend your knees, shift your hips back, send your gaze forward. Exhale, step forward, jump. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. While your hands are close to the floor, grab that strap, bend your knees, sit your hips low, Utkatasana. Come on up to standing, draw hands to sort of prayer at your heart if you've got a prop in your hand. And then you're going to shift the weight into the left foot, hook that strap around the ball of your right foot. And before you get into it, know sometimes one side can be way different from the other. So bend through that right knee, and then any amount, begin to extend that right leg forward towards the front of the room. Hadankushtasana on side two. So you're standing on your left leg with your hands looped around your towel or your strap on your right leg. Finding the space that allows you to stabilize through that standing leg and keep your spine long. And it's going to look different in every single person's body. And then I talked for a long time on side one. So now on side two, we have to just hang out and breathe, right? Find the full expression of whatever pose you took on side one or whatever variation of the pose you took on side one. And then you're going to bring both of the straps into your right hand. Take the left hand to your left hip and open that right leg out to the side. Parangushtasana B. Standing tall, reaching the spine long. Couple more steady breaths. Let your standing leg be the most important thing. So if that lifted knee is bent, awesome. As long as your standing leg is straight, right? You work in degrees. The result is not nearly as important as just working the action. Last inhale. And then exhale, draw yourself back to center. Release the foot, release the strap. Sweep the arms up and overhead. Ooh. 
reconnect with your stability. Put the weight into that right foot, bend through your left knee and clasp hold of the top of that thigh bone so you get a little length through the front of the leg. Reach that right arm with vigor, tip the chest forward. Swing that left leg back. Dancer pose. Steady gaze. And then inhale, you come all the way up, right? Draw your left knee towards your chest as you reach that left arm up towards the ceiling. We're coming to the top of the mountain here. Draw the hands to prayer at your heart. Tip the chest forward. Float that left leg back. Bend through your right knee. Land the left foot behind you, right? So you come towards your crescent pose. Lower that back knee down to the ground for a little bit more stability. Then redraw the hands to prayer at your heart. Twist the left elbow on the outside of the right knee, and that might be just enough right there. Or if you took one of the other optional variations on side two, lifting the back knee or spinning the back heel down to the ground, you do that, right? You find the version that lets you connect with your breath. So it's not about making the most extreme shape. It's really about finding a shape that lets you explore your breath and lengthen the parts of you that need lengthening. Last inhale here. And then exhale, unwind. Tuck your back toe, lift your back knee. Step it back into your plank pose. You can take it through one last vinyasa if you want, or go straight to your dog. Take a huge inhale through your nose. Exhale, open your mouth, let it go. Lower your knees all the way to the floor. Shift your hips back. Ooh, you made it into child's pose. So just let that low spine kind of relax. Let yourself chill out for a second. <clears throat> and then inhale, roll yourself up to seated. Shifting your hips off to one side. Extend the legs forward. Taking just a moment in Dandasana. Right, so sitting up tall, letting your spine be long. And again, if you're in a really bendy body, imagine driving the legs up towards the pelvis. And if you're in a tighter body, you may find that in order to be able to sit up straight, you need to bend the knees a little bit. Do it, right? Make yourself comfortable. Last breath here. And then everybody will bend your knees, reach the arms forward, lift the chest up. Just a little bit of a, a nod to our abdominal work from last week. Draw the belly button towards the spine as slow as you can. Roll yourself all the way down to the floor. And then keep bending your knees until you can place the feet flat on the ground. Separate your feet about hip bones distance apart. Press down through the feet and lift the hips up. So after all that sort of stretchy, stretchy, this is gonna activate and draw those hamstrings back together. So you can hold the sides of your mat or interlace underneath you. Lift the chest towards your chin and root all four corners of your feet down into the ground. Two more long, smooth breaths here. And then exhale, release. Take a little pause. Then press down through the feet, lift the hips one more time, bridge pose. If you've been practicing yoga for a long time and your day would be much better off with an Urdhva down your asana, you can bring the hands along your ears and lift yourself up. Take one more breath here. And then exhale, lower yourself all the way down to the floor. 
Draw the knees up into your chest. You might find that it's nice to circle and give your low back a little massage. And then circle the knees in the other direction. And then let the knees fall to either side, left or right. It's up to you. Let the head and shoulders release to the opposite side. So nice, easy twist here. And then draw the knees back up into your chest. And let them fall to the other side. And then draw the knees back up into your chest. Set your feet down onto the floor. Cross your right ankle over top of your left knee. And just hang here for a second. This may be enough, right? Just let your shoulders relax. You can press the heels of your hands into the little hip crease to give yourself some traction. Or if you want, you can draw that left knee up towards your chest or a little thread the eye of the needle action, just so long as your shoulders can stay relaxed, right? The vibe shifts from that very fiery, stabilizing, powerful standing practice to the release of these reclined poses. Take one more big breath here. And then exhale, release the left foot down to the ground, release the right foot down to the ground. Pause for just a second. And then cross that left ankle over top of the right. Maybe it's enough to stay right here. Press the heels of the hands into that little hip crease if you want that little bit of traction. And then draw the right knee up into your chest if you desire. Coming into that, thread the eye of the needle. And let your breath continue to be long and smooth here. And then release that right foot down to the ground, release the left foot down to the ground. So your strap or your towel, you may have ditched it somewhere off to the side. Go ahead and grab it. And then what we did while we were standing, that Padangushasana A and B, we're gonna repeat it here on our backs. And you'll notice, hopefully, that when you're on your back and you're supported by the floor, the experience of the shape is probably gonna be pretty different. So allow this to be more about lengthening than strengthening. You're going to draw the right knee up towards your chest, loop the strap around the ball of that right foot, and start to extend the heel up towards the ceiling any amount. So I'm, for the first couple of moments, keeping my left knee bent and the foot flat on the floor. You can give yourself as much space in the strap so that your elbows can uh, rest on the ground, right? And you may find, if you're in a tighter body, that the, to straighten the leg, you don't come all the way up to vertical, uh, right? The heel's not gonna be pointing towards the ceiling. It might be pointing more towards that spot where the ceiling meets the wall, but you're gonna get length through the back of your leg. And then again, same thing if you're in a really loose body, think about driving the inner thigh bone down. And then this left leg, it can stay right where it is, or if you've got the space and the length to do it, extend that left leg long, right? So it's like that standing pose, but on your back. And then allow yourself to relax into it a little bit, right? And if you're in that tighter body, maybe on an inhale, you bend the knee and release. And on your exhale, you lift the heel towards the ceiling. So it's not totally static. You're just beginning to lengthen things out. But if you want to hold it, 
and be static, that's fine too. Few more breaths right here. Just allowing them to be a little longer than normal. So you're bringing oxygen into your body. And then bring both of the straps into your right hand or both sides of the towel into your right hand. Bring your left hand to the top of that left hip bone so you anchor it down into the floor. And just like when you were standing, rotate the toes and any amount start to open that right leg out to the side wall. But you want to keep that left hip grounded down into the ground. So if you're rolling all the way over to the side, you've missed the point. <laughs> Soften through your shoulders as much as you can. Keep the breath long and smooth as much as you can. And then inhale, draw that right leg back up to center. Bend through the right knee, release the strap. Bend through both knees, place both feet flat on the floor and just pause for a second and observe your body. One side might feel very different from the other. And if you're stressing, take a big inhale through your nose. Exhale, open your mouth, let it go. And then bend that left knee towards your chest, hook the strap around, and then begin to extend that left heel up towards the ceiling. So the leg may or may not come all the way to straight. The heel may or may not be pointing straight up the ceiling. If you've got enough length in the strap to have it a little bit forward, right? If you're in a tighter body, that's fine. And then as you're here, you decide for you what makes the most sense to keep that right knee bent or extend the right leg long on the floor to keep the stretch static, right, with steady breath. Or maybe if things are really on the tighter side, inhaling, bending the knee, exhaling, straightening at any amount so that you start to find movement in the muscle without creating tension because you're trying so hard to hold it, right? Steady as she goes, even breath. Two more breaths here. And then bring the straps into your left hand. Press the right hand in the top of that right hip bone. Rotate the hip from deep inside the hip socket. And then open that left leg out to the side wall. Any amount. And that leg may or may not be straight. I think there's a lot going on here. Take it slow and steady. And then inhale, come back up to center. This time you're going to take that right foot up to meet your left foot. And again, the knees may be super duper bent, or they might be extending all the way up towards the ceiling. You want to feel as relaxed as possible. You're not forcing anything. You're just meeting yourself where you are. Using the breath to maybe find a little bit more space. 
allow yourself, if possible, to be like 90% released here. It's like 10% effort. And then take one more big inhale. Exhale, bend the knees. Release your strap or your towel off to one side. Hug the knees up into your chest. Curl yourself up into a little ball. Give yourself a little squeeze. Take a big inhale here. And then exhale, extend your legs out long. Just allow your whole body to relax into the floor. And if you need to adjust or fidget until you're really comfortable, take a couple of moments to do that. So you can be totally supported by the mat. As you take one last controlled inhale through your nose, gathering up all your effort And then exhale, open your mouth, let it go. And with your eyes closed, for a couple of minutes, just allow yourself to rest here in Tadasana. Letting everything come together. As I mind the time, so I won't leave you hanging. Just relax. Allow your next inhale to be just a little bit deeper. Wiggling through your fingers and your toes, stretching your arms up and overhead. And then as you're ready, make your way up to a comfortable cross-legged position. So you finish up exactly in the same shape that you began but maybe just a little bit more open. And then drawing your hands to prayer at your heart. Bowing your head towards your hands, finishing things out with that little gesture of gratitude. Taking gratitude with you as you move off of your mat and into the rest of your day. Namaste. You did it, guys. There's your Monday live yoga. So, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. I will answer whatever I can. Um, I've got lots of different types of classes on my page, so like and subscribe. Click the bell so you can get notified. We do live every Monday at 2. Uh, we do a little tutorial gets dropped every Thursday and we do a short form class gets dropped every Saturday. That's about 15 to 30 minutes based on a specific topic. Everything's archived on the channel so you can watch anything on demand. Have a wonderful day, you guys. Bye.